Hey guys, this is Rene. Welcome back for another video on this channel. And this is part four for this um, moving average day breakout strategy in gold that is no longer trading day breakouts, but it is still following the overall moving average direction. It has a TP, it has a stop loss, and it has a trailing stop, and it um, trades um, or it enters trades on small retracements during the day. And now a lot of you guys also like to have a good oscillator as a filter. So what I want to do in this video is add another indicator as a filter. And this might be the last video then for, for the series because then you kind of know how to modify the program on your own and you can add more filters, more trailing stops, more whatever you want. <laughs> then you pretty much have all the basics and the the concept or the, the base build that you need to um, create your own fully functioning strategy based on this. So yeah, here you saw how the program works so far. Trades, maximum one trade per day. If there's a retracement in or against the trend direction, then we enter in the trend direction. We have a TPSL and trading stop loss. And now I also want to add another filter, which is a oscillator. I think I will just go with a single, a simple uh, RSI. And what I like to do is I um, usually like to create another time frame for this. Um, so what we can do is we can make this the moving average time frame and this then the MACD time frame. Um, or we, ch uh, we just go for the same time frame for both of these. This is completely up to you. Um, yeah, maybe let's just choose the same time frame for both of them. So let's add the inputs that we need for the RSI. I think the RSI has the uh, periods and the applied price, if I'm not f uh, wrong here. Um, so price should be price closed by default. And then, of course, since we want to work with another indicator, we will need to create another handle for this and um, initialize this handle variable with a actual value. This is usually done in the onInit function. So use the iRSI function this time. Then we have the RSI periods and the RSI applied price. And yeah, if you compile this, there shouldn't be any errors. And now we can use this handle here in our on tick function to get the actual RSI values. Mm, so what I want to do is here, I want to create another variable. Has to be an array, of course, even though I think I will just use one um, index of this array. The RSI only has one line. And if we do it like this, we will copy the last um, daily bar, the value for the last daily bar in this RSI array here. So now what we want to do is, oh, also what we can do is as a input parameter, what I usually like to do is create RSI upper level um, and lower level as inputs. So the user is also able to easily change these quickly. And then in the program, before we open the trades, after che uh, checking the Moving average, for example, we can check if RSI, oh no, this was not correct, if close, oh no, this was right, sorry, I'm confused here. If RSI, um, if the RSI value is um, for buy positions, we want to check if it's below the RSI lower value. And yeah, in this case, we then uh, want to check for the retracement and for, um, for, for, for sell positions, we want to check if the RSI at the last bar is above the RSI upper level. And then, of course, we have to rearrange the if statements here a bit because we just added another if statement. But yeah, if we add it like this, we should now see that if we do another test, um, we do have the RSI. Also, first of all, in the inputs, we now have all the uh, input variables here for the RSI, of course. I won't change anything else. I'm still just checking 2023 to 2024 for gold using this uh, same strategy in the visual mode. And I'm using the every tick based on real tick calculation method, even though the ticks are essentially like not super important because in the code I added um, uh, this block here, which means that it's only calculated once at the beginning of every one minute bar. But yeah. So yeah, let's see what, what, what this brings to us. So um, let's go to the daily chart. 
So we can now see here, we do have this uh, RSI now, and we do see the, the first trades here are left out already. So we will see a lot less trades, of course. Uh, the question is, will we even see any trades? And uh, this might be too restrictive, so we might do not see a lot of trades here because, yeah, I just realized... Um, that the RSI and the moving average are kind of in line a lot of the times. So what we can do is we can, yeah, we can work with different uh, time periods. Yeah, this is maybe something I want to do here. This, this might make sense. So let's go down with the time period for the, um, for the, for the RSI. So what I do is I rename this MA, MA time frame, and then I will create another input here, which I name RSI time frame. So now we have two different uh, time frames here, and we could make the RSI, the four hour RSI uh, chart. And then of course here where we get the, where we calculate the handle, we will use the MA time frame and the RSI time frame for the, um, for each of these uh, handle uh, calculations. And then if we compile, we will get a lot of errors because I use the time frame in different parts of the code. So for example, here, I now have to go um, and say, I either say I use the MA time frame here or I could create another time frame or I could... Um, hard code the daily time frame. I mean, you have different options here. I will just go with the MA time frame here for these um, open, high, low, and close price calculations. So these are always based on the moving average time frame now, but the RSI is calculated on a different time frame. So in the inputs, we can now decide what time frame we want to choose for the RSI calculation. And you will realize now, since I, um, or if I start another test, we should see a additional chart window here because usually the tester yeah, is smart enough to realize which time frames are used in this specific test. So you can see now we do have the um, four hour chart here also. So we see the RSI in the four hour chart. We see the moving average in the daily chart and uh, we, uh, we still have the one minute chart because it's the base time frame that I used for this test. And now we can see if, um, yeah, maybe we can get a trade here. So yeah, you can see here, I think this will generate a trade because RSI is uh, below the 30 uh, level here and we see a, a decline in price. And also the, the, the price is above the moving average, I think. So let's go through the time frame. So you can see here, on the one minute time frame, we of course th see the trade with the TP and the stop loss. Then on the daily time frame, we see we are still above the moving average. Also, this candle is very negative, so we do see the minus 0.5% uh, minimum uh, retracement. And then here we can see on the um, on this. Uh, um, RSI <laughs> for our chart here we see the RSI drop below 30. So yeah, I don't know if this is actually beneficial for the strategy, but it's, it's, it's something you can try out when developing new strategies, just adding some more filters. This could be good, could be bad. I mean, you never know it until you try it, but I just want to give you some tools so you know how you can um, yeah, build your own strategies. And as I said, you can play around with the time frames, with the general inputs. You can also, of course, add more and more um, filters to the strategy if you think it's, it's, it's needed. So yeah, that's it. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to see next. And um, yeah, have fun playing around with this template for this strategy. And that's it. I'm out. Have a good time. Good trades. Bye-bye.